I mean, to... God, you can't f read that. You c you Why just... were you Irish? Yeah, you can't. No, you just you can't. can't read, read that. You just, just can't read that. Read that. Hey, he's in character. You, can't, you can't read that. You can't read that. You can't. Yes, you can. You. <laughs> what does that say? Johnny Junta. No one. Johnny Junta. Listen up, big rolls in session. My name's Harge, and I'll be holding court for this NFL season. This is gonna be a competition between your four favorite owner's box personalities, Ryan, Sandy, Abe, and Johnny. I'm gonna give each contestant $3,000, and each contestant's gonna give out eight picks every week. And after every week, I'll update the standings of each contestant's bankroll by adding or subtracting money. That's all from the judge. Let's get into week one. All right, thank you, Harsh. Yes, this is Bankroll, the owner's box weekly NFL pick show. It's week one, so it's time to get in the picks, how it's gonna work. I know we explained it, but we'll get into it quickly. Eight total games, three 1 p.m. games, three 4 p.m. games, two primetime games, the Sunday night and the Monday night game, and then our lock of the week, so eight total games, and we're risking 100, or to win $100 on each pick. Uh, just to clarify for you guys and everyone at home, so if you have a minus 110 line that you're betting on, you're risking 110 to win 100. If you have an underdog pick, it's 100. Uh, let's say it's plus 150, you're betting 100. That'll win you 150. And then the locks are worth 200. And if you go head to head with someone, it's $400 on the line that you can either remove from your bankroll or that's going to the other person essentially. Spreads, total, totals, money lines, no props, no nonsense there. We're just getting no. straight to the picks. Let's start off with the first game that we're gonna be picking in the 1 p.m. slot, Jags, Dolphins. I'd love to hear from our weather analyst first, Johnny. It's gonna be sunny, uh, but I'll start off with my pick here. I have the over in this game. Dolphins offense absolutely rocks. Dra Jaguars have a little Trevor Lawrence slig in that thing. Dolphins defense still has a couple injuries as well. I like over 48 and a half in this game. I'm not picking a side. Hmm. There was a nice little nugget that you had about the Miami Dolphins. Do you remember that nugget? No. What was it? They were the best 1 p.m. team of <laughs> Best 1 p.m. team in the NFL. 42. I mean, you did the work a day ago. Come on, John. You had the, the Dolphins are 42 and 23 at 1 p.m. games in the last 10 years. You know what's going to happen on what? Sunday? What? They get shit pumped by the Jags. Okay. Plus three I don't and a half. Know if I agree with that. I don't Jacksonville agree with that. Jaguars. I love them. Jalen Ramsey, hopefully, going to be out too. That's going to be mm -hmm. a little line movement here. So three and a half is a nice little number to have. Love the Jacksonville Jaguars. Revenge game, even if he's not playing for Jalen Ramsey. Me and Avery. Sandy? Handshake emoji. First pick, first game of all time on Bankroll. We're aligning. Jags plus three and a half. I am not betting on two. I hate, I'm I'm a two a hater. Listen, I know he's a regular season hero. Johnny, great trend also that you forgot, but it is a useful trend for the 1 p.m. game here. But I think the Jaguars are a new team this year. I think they're ready to lock in. I think they cover the spread week one. Disagree with you guys, but I agree with Johnny. I'm actually on the over as well. Over 48 and a half. Wow. Two new defensive Man. coordinators here. If you guys uh, know anything about gambling, there is a nice side to be on. Yes. That is the Dolphins and the under. And in this the football. under. But yeah, two new defensive coordinators here. Uh, I think this Jags offense is going to be electric, and we obviously saw what the Dolphins could do last year. Huge scheme change. I'm thinking we're, we're going to see big, big yardages from the, the Dolphins receivers, I think, uh, on Sunday at 1 o'clock. All right, the next 1 p.m. game. Panthers, Saints, Sandy. Hit us with the, the, the line is four. I have bet this game officially. This is the first bet I locked in in week one. The Carolina Panthers plus the points. Listen, a lot of people are high on this team. Bryce Young can't get much worse, but I do like some of the pickups they made. I also think that the Saints are dog shit. So I'll be fading the Saints. I'll be taking the Cal, uh, California. The Carolina Panthers plus the points all day long. Interesting. In this one. That's really interesting. Your cell job should be longer. <laughs> I am on the same side as this idiot. No. <laughs> I love the Panthers week one. Everyone is down on them. They're the poverty, one of the worst teams in the NFL last year. By the way, this guy over here said they were better than the Bears. Worst take in the history of the show. Panthers plus four. Everyone wants some good offense in this football game, and you will not be getting good offense in this football game. I like the under 41 and a half. Okay, same thing for you. We have our first head-to-head -head matchup here. Not that it's worth for any more because it's just regular picks, but I am actually on the over between these two dog shit teams. I think Clint Kubiak comes over and changes the Saints offense a little bit. I think we're going to see a lot of Taysom Hill this year, which should help Derek Carr. Don't don't give the ball. I to believe Derek it is Carr. the most obvious 21-17 football game to ever be played. Could be could be that, could or it could be the most obvious 24-28 game. That wouldn't be so good for me. And could Dave Canales is going to change Bryce Young like he did with Baker Mayfield and like he did with Geno Smith. So I'm taking the over there. Our next game and the last of the 1 p.m. slate, Texans and Colts. Texans minus three on the road in Indianapolis. Over-unders at 48 and a half. Johnny? 
The Indianapolis Colts are 1-14-1 and one in week one in the last 16 week ones. The worst team in the NFL. I'm taking the Colts, though. Colts plus 128. <laughs> Everyone loves the Texans. They're the media darling. C.J. Stroud, always the greatest quarterback ever. It's Colts money line. Anthony Richardson is going to dog walk this team and surprise the world at Lucas Oil Stadium. It's Indianapolis Colts money line. So that's our first underdog money line of the year, Johnny. Yep. Well, there you so far, I'm yeah. the, so I also have the Colts money. There we line. go. Oh no, Colts money line plus one twenty-eight. I I gotta agree with Johnny. I think Anthony Richardson, Jonathan Taylor are gonna have big games on the ground. Bold prediction: two hundred plus run, rushing yards combined between the two of them. Three rush, four rushing touchdowns, four rushing touchdowns. I've gone back and forth all day. This line stinks. I it's, it's, hate it's gambling really, on this football game. Yeah. I told Cam, who does our graphics, I'm picking the Texans, and then I wrote down on my sheet the Colts. Back on the Houston Texans minus two and a half. It's it feels like now it feels sharp to take the Colts. So I'll just be on the other side of Johnny for this pick, and Fair I enough. and I'll I'll be okay. I don't want to not even coming close to one of my locks because I have no clue what's going to happen in this football game. I was I was in the same spot as you this morning, pretty torn. I had this and one other game left off until this morning, yes. where I took the over yes. again. This is probably one of the square picks on my card. If you guys are going to follow the show all year, I don't, don't do a lot of square betting, but I feel like this one, you just brain dead think over. Again, a lot of this is because Anthony Richardson turns the ball over a ton, can make plays happen in his legs. I think the Colts are going to score. I just don't know if they can outscore the Texans. But what I do know is they're both going to score, and they're both going to score more than 48 and a half points. I'll be taking the over in this match, sir. The Colts, is, it's going to be a, it's, it's a big, big game. One of, the, one of the few divisional games, I think, in week one this week. So, uh, all right. And that is it for the 1 p.m. games on the other side, the 4 p.m. games. All right, here we go with the 4 p.m. games. Three games again here. We're going to be starting with the Cowboys and the Browns. This total has moved down quite a bit since it's opening. A lot of money coming in on the under. Now it's at 41, and the Browns are taking 2.5 points at home, minus 2.5. Sandy? I think we've talked about this a bit. I love the under in this game. Second bet I bet for week one. Um, again, I just Deshaun Watson, this Browns defense... I'm not high in Deshaun Watson. I think the defensive units on both sides are amazing. I also think the Cowboys will struggle to score. The totals moved down three points for a reason. I'm taking the under all day. Uh, I'm also on the under, actually. I'm Perfect. also on the under. I think it's going to be a battle of the line of scrimmage. Both of these defensive lines are really, really good, and we'll get to either quarterbacks. The Browns' offensive line, not as good as it, it was last year. Gigi Quills is still out. I'm on the Browns minus two and a half. Uh, I think this defense is absolutely ridiculous. Nick Chubb won't be playing, which will be a tough one, obviously. But Who's their running back? Um, what's his name? Fuck. Shit. Shit. I don't know his name. I don't remember his name. But I love the Browns here. Everyone's buying, everyone's writing off Deshaun Watson as they should. He's a scumbag. <laughs> but I do like the Browns minus two and a half. Now I like the Cowboys plus two and a half here. Everyone's out on the Cowboys. Totally out yeah, on the Cowboys. True. The regular season Cowboys. Have we not been watching football for the last five years? That's fair. That's a real they score the most points Great point ever there. in the regular season. I will take the regular season Cowboys in the first game of the season. Uh, plus two and a half. I've picked all road teams. I was going to also question. That's really good, dude. Yes, did surely. Did you get your hands on Johnny's picks prior to the show? Because that, that could be considered tampering. No, I don't okay. want you Johnny's just picks. Me on the yeah, I do that's... not want Johnny's picks. No, you want, no well, I know you want, you the, want the opposite. For sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, fair I enough. Know what you're, yeah, I like what you're doing. It, it seems intentional because you guys have been on the opposite side yes. of each other almost every game here. Uh, and we're, we're going to split down the middle, too. We'll yes. both be like four yeah, and four, probably. Yeah, fine. That's fine. No blood. Just got to get that lock. Um, all right. Next game, I will I will lead us off here. Commanders and the Bucks. Sandy, Florida. Weather is unpredictable. Okay? Very. The weather is supposed to be pretty bad. Supposed to be. There's mm. a systems coming through that day. They don't know if it's going to be affect kickoff or not. They'll probably only know around kickoff. I'm still taking the over because both of these defenses suck this year. The Commanders have the worst secondary in the NFL, and the Bucks certainly have their worst secondary under Todd Bowles. Jane Daniels and Cliff Kingsbury, I think, will click. I'm taking with the points. Over 43 and a half. I'm also on the over. I am also on the over. Johnny? I'm on the under. No! Oh! Okay. Under 43 and a half. Daniel, Jaden Daniels, obviously his first career NFL game. I think there's going to be a little bit of butterflies there, a little bit of nerves. I like under 43 and a half. This game is... 17-14 is going to be the final score of this game. This is an unders game. And usually, when you're fading majority of the panel, you're on the right side. So I, I, I love this even more. This is our first Johnny versus the, the panel. Yeah. Johnny yeah. versus the panel. That should be I love this track. even more now. Yes. 143 and a half. <laughs> All right. All right. The last game of the 4 p.m. slate. Seahawks, Broncos. Bo Nix playing his first 
pro NFL game on the road in Seattle. Probably 27 years the, old. Probably one of the toughest <laughs> environments to play in in the NFL. Seahawks minus five and a half. The total is 41 and a half. Eighth. Really want to take the Broncos, and I was trying to talk myself into it all day. Bo Nix, Oregon, knows the area, you know? Maybe some people out there. Family. Won't, won't be doing it. Seahawks minus five and a half. Yeah. Okay. Land on the Seahawks. I'm also on the Seahawks. I'm also betting this, and it might be one of my bigger bets. I don't know. I've talked myself into loving the Seahawks team oh. in week one. I don't know why. Is that um, a peek into, into your, your lock? It is not. Okay. It's not my lock. I. I love my lock more than this one, but I do like this play. Seahawks minus five and a half. I'm with Avery and Sandy. Oh, I love the Seahawks. I love <laughs> Christ, man. Sean Payton get, taking that much money from Broncos ownership to coach there and come back and revive his career. Not revive his career, I guess, to, to come back. This Broncos team stinks out loud. The Seahawks are good. I don't know if Tyler Lockett's playing week one, actually, but DK Metcalf is going to eat. Jackson for the yeah. Jigba is going to eat as well. I love... The Seattle Seahawks minus five and a half at Lumen. Is it Lumen Field? Yep. Yes, it is. Johnny. Lumen Century Lumen, Link, whatever they call yeah, whatever it. they call oh, it. Oh, I, I, I love I love them minus five and a half. Even when they change stadium names. You were trying to say JSN's brother's name, baseball yeah. player. Kenan. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. C.J. Stroud went into Baltimore last year, really struggled. Who was the defensive coordinator? Does anybody know? The fuck no, I don't know. Mike McDonald. Who's the new head coach of the Seahawks? Mike McDonald. Actually, Going into I enemy territory. That, that being said, I'm also on the Seahawks, by the way. So that's a clean sweep across the board. Wow. Seahawks minus five and a half. That already hit. Lock it in. Lock that already in. hit. Lock in the opposite. <laughs> Lock in the opposite uh, is absolutely right. All right. We will now be heading to the trivia segment of the show where you can win back cash for your bankroll to build it up a little bit more, maybe get a little bit riskier later on in the weeks and to help maybe some of the people, some others on this panel uh, that might not be a, as good at picking the games. Babs, over to you, buddy. All right, guys, welcome to the trivia segment. We thought that there's a chance that the guys might blow their whole bankroll, so we put trivia in here where they can earn some money back, so in that way, maybe they have money to bet in week eight. How this will work is the guys have the option to answer a question. I'll give them one randomly, and if they want to take it, they can risk a hundred dollars. So if they get it right, they get a hundred bucks, gets back into the competition. We a can lose bit. money, mm -hmm. yeah, if the, yeah, but you can pass. You can, you can pass, pass you on it. You don't have to answer it. So you don't okay, have to answer this it. This is no longer as fun as I thought it was going to be. No, that's we gotta, the point. no, we got to grind. Yeah, yeah you got to lock grind. In. I thought we were just yeah. playing for fun coins. No, there's yeah. a bonus. This one isn't after. a participation trophy. But there is a fun one. There's yeah. the final qu yes. question, which is which one, Babs? What question is that, Babs? So we have a group question that you can earn hundred dollars risk free. So it's a bit, a bit woke, a bit you know, handout. <laughs> Crazy <laughs> communist, that's communist question. We'll call that's it. That's good. I like that. Communist Babs. question. Let's do that. Yeah, risk free hundred dollars. You all have it, and you'll have to write it down in your white. Board there, communists like the most opposite things of all time. Yes, yeah. Like, well, Woke and right communism, about. they're kind of no. They're like really aligned. In theories, in no. Some good, theories, good. This is. Th I wanted this to be a politics show. <laughs> yes. Just. Anyways, we'll cut that out. Yeah. No, it's we fine. can call it the woke question. Yeah. Or the whatever. Just go. Communist question. Um. Yeah. So you all write it down. We all know Johnny cheats. So make sure you can't see. Oh, I can't see with all my glasses anyway. Yeah, it's true. That he. That is a Johnny good is point. legitimately playing blind. Yes. yes. To set up the order here so they're truly not questions set up for anybody, Ryan, give me a number between one and ten. Seven. Four. Six. One. All right. Avery is going to start because the number was one. Fuck Way to you, go. Dave. Why do you have to do that? Avery, which player had the longest reception in the NFL last season? Don't want it. Nope. I don't want it. No. <laughs> Am I allowed to not take it? Yeah, you can, yeah, pass. You can not take it. You can pass, pass. on it. And that question it. is now dead because it is C.D. Lamb. Johnny. Pass. <laughs> <laughs> Which player had the longest rush in the NFL last season? Come on, dude. Just pass. Something. Johnny doesn't want it. Two, two years ago, it was Derrick Henry, right? Yeah. This Who was it? Brees Hall. Oh, legacy run. There's 95 True. yards or something. Yeah, yeah. It was, a, it was a good one. Ryan. Yeah. Which defensive player had the most interceptions last season? <sighs> what was his name? Oh wait, wasn't it? Uh, I'm gonna go with Geno Stone. That would be incorrect. Oh, it was Deron Bland. Deron Bland. Yeah. Three Cowboys. Cowboys. Minus 100 points for Ryan Sura. $100, Babs. $100. Minus 100. Which player had the most sacks in the NFL last season? Fuck, this should be the easiest one of all of them. Easily. Dude. You can have the best guess of all of them. Okay, dude, let's go. I don't want to answer it. You guys are all a bunch of pussies, to be honest. 
I wasn't going to You're trying to put on yourself. a clean show here. I mean, there's you don't it's got to be whoever the, won like defensive player of the year. Who did you who do you think it is, Avery? Um, I would would have gone with like was, Miles Garrett or something or TJ yeah, Watt. TJ Watt? Watt. TJ Watt. It's always TJ Watt. I was going to say I have the ball say it. Yeah, you're a pussy. Whatever. That's fine. I didn't lose money. Soft, right. Sandy. Uh, whatever. Ryan serves the risk taker in the office. He's also the biggest loser of today so far. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see when when we let's start. Let's start back. We'll see after we. I can't believe I didn't answer that question. I'm not gonna lie. Lessons learned. Communist question is now up. You can answer this freely by writing it down on your whiteboard. So let's pick them things up. Which kicker in the NFL had the most attempts last year? Uh, like field goal <laughs> attempts? attempts. Field goal attempts. Just field goals. <laughs> Just field goals. And how are we getting this right? You're writing it down on your board. Which kicker? And then you're just right, right, oh, which kicker? I thought yeah. you had to write the number of oh, fucking the, attempts. No. Oh no. No, the kicker. Okay, most attempts. So your offense has to be bad enough not to score points, but good enough to move the ball down the field. I have a wrong answer, but I have a wrong answer too. But Avery, Brandon Aubrey, and Jake Moody, Young Way Koo. Brandon Aubrey as well. Johnny was the closest, but none of you are right. What? Harrison Butker. Oh, of Fuck him, dude. That count, we can't play off. How now, by easy the way? is that? No one got no points. one got points, but one person lost. That's yeah. It. So the the you know <laughs> that didn't go the way we thought it would. All right. After that debacle, back to the primetime games. All right. Thank you, Globby Robbie. Primetime games now. Sunday night, Monday night. We've got the Rams and the Lions. Lions minus three and a half. The over under at 51. Sandy, what do you got in this one, buddy? I hate this pick. Probably my least favorite of my card. Uh, I'm on the over in this game. This game, I, I've said it for the last couple of days. It just reeks of points. And it's what it is. Rams, Lions. Lions, I think, can lay a ton of points. Like, I actually, if team totals were allowed, to probably take the Lions team total here because I don't know m as much about the Rams. But I'm going to bank on points from both sides and just sweat out that for Sunday night. Lions. Lines minus three and a half. Really don't like it either, yeah, to be I honest. This. There's it, it something. Stink, it stinks like the playoffs, kind of, where I was really wanted to be on the Rams, was on the Rams. Um, but yeah, I'm going to take the Lions here. Minus three and a half, open season. Rams are really good. I think the Rams are going to be really good this year. I think they're going to make the playoffs. I love the over in this game as well. I think there's going to be tons and tons and tons of points. Matt Stafford, Jared Goff, asses and seats, Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup. I'm on Raw St. Brown. This is gonna be this is gonna be the fun game. I we need more Sunday night football games like this where it's just tons of points, two offensive juggernauts going toe to toe. I got the under in this game. Yeah, over. over, sorry. Jesus Christ. Over. Over. All right. Uh I I don't have as much faith in the Rams this year as I think some other people do. I'm taking the Lions minus three and a half. I think this Lions team is is honest, honestly built like perfectly. One of the better teams. Really good offensive line, two really good running backs. Receiving room just continues to grow every year, and I think the uh, their secondary is going to be good. So, uh, Lions minus three and a half. Monday night, Sandy's Super Bowl, quite literally, could be the start of your Super Bowl season. Yes. The Niners and the Jets. The Jets now plus four and a half with Trent Williams back, Christian McCaffrey back, Brennan Ayuk back. Sandy, I'll, I'll give you the floor first. This will be my biggest bet of week one. Uh, Jets plus the points, plus four and a half. I actually have bet this at plus three and a half. Then Trent Williams signed. I will be betting it again at plus four and a half, and I'll be sprinkling money line. Jets are a banger this week. Absolutely love that play. So I'll be rocking my guy A-Rod. I'm on the Jets, plus four and a half as well, and I think it'll go down as the worst bet of the week when they're really? down 14 in the in the first half. Uh, but I I like the New York Jets plus four and a half. No, or the, or the, or the under. But I actually do it, had, don't do it, I actually don't had don't my, it. before you go, I had that thought that it's gonna be a shit bet because I'm all in on it, so that's why I didn't make it my lock. If you guys are wondering, I'm on the Jets plus four and a half. So Jets defense this is, is this no. Is be worse than we, a people date forget. In people forget. The Jets defense is was the reason why they were at least like a, they were in a lot of their games last year. Their offense stunk out loud. I mean, you had Zach Wilson playing quarterback, obviously, but I love the Jets plus four and a half here. Trent Williams showing up late to camp, minimal amount of reps. I love the Jets plus four and a half. Aaron Rodgers revenge game. I'm also on the Jets. Oh fuck. I'm also on the Jets plus four and a half. That's good. Prime time it's, game. It's, the it's, biggest, probably the most eyeballs of the week, and we're all on the Jets. Maybe we're sharp. Maybe we're just idiots. But I will say, oh, Trent Williams is back. That's great. To be honest, the rest of this offensive line for the Niners is dog shit. Uh, and I, Trent Williams certainly helps that. But this pass rush for the Jets is no joke. And as Johnny said, their defense is really good. 
Brees Hall, I think, is going to have a huge game in this game. Uh, love the Jets, plus four and a half. So those are both the primetime games, and now we go into the locks. Week one, lock of the week for me is going to be the Jacksonville Jaguars on the road, plus three and a half. Fucking right, Dave. Hate that. My lock, I talked about this two picks ago. It is the Rams lines over, folks. Don't overthink what? it. <laughs> Don't be an idiot. There is going to be a million points in this game. I will be watching it. I'll be seated. I'll be praying. This over is my lock of week one. All right. Uh, I'm getting bold with this one. I'm putting two big ones on the Colts money line. That is my lock of the week. I think they upset Houston uh, as one of the trendier teams this offseason, definitely coming into the year. And to round us out, my lock of the week, not going to be the Jets, as I just hinted at, but it is going to be the Browns under 40 and a half points. Wow. Give it to me all day. Lowest shit line. Getting bad CLV, but I fucking love this play. That's my lock. All right. Eight picks and our locks for week one of the NFL season. This show will be continuing every single Friday for the rest of the NFL season. We're going to be incorporating maybe new segments, new sets, a bunch of things to come within the game of bankroll this year. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next week for week two.